tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, we're talking about an image sequence today. That is a sequence of images. And this is not trivial at all. This is a file texture, obviously. So when I right mouse click here and check the material attributes, um, it is the color is mapped to a file. And that file is using an image sequence. And uh, the, the image name is this one. So what I'll try now is I create a totally new scene and I show you how where the problem lies. New scene. And many people might think that basically mapping a movie to a 3D surface is a thing of post-production, of compositing. But in many cases it isn't because you need that image sequence deeply integrated into the 3D scene. So it really depends on the project you have, but uh, in many projects you need that sequence within that movie. You won't have fun with compositing here. Anyway, let's um, create two curves. And I rotate that one a little bit and select both of them and create a loft. And since it's looking black, I go to surfaces and I reverse that direction. And I go to loft and change a few spans. This is not at all crucial here. Now I want to have a texture. Right mouse click and assign new material. And I create a Maya Lambert shader. Why a Maya Lambert shader? Because it's the most simple shader we have. And we already had a Maya Lambert shader in gray, but uh, we want to use a fresh one, which is called Lambert 2. Now I go to color and here's the checkerboard icon, which means I map that color with something else. And here I go to the Maya 2D textures and that's the file texture. We'll later see that there's an Arnold file texture as well, uh, which is called image, but uh, we use that standard classic file name. Now when we enter an image name now in order to show Maya what kind of image we want to use. We would type it in here or use this folder here to load it. But um, we want to have an image sequence. That's what this tutorial is about. And as you can see, the image sequence starts with a number one. And uh, it's uh, in a violet uh, color because it's an expression here. It is basically telling Maya to read per frame the new and next number. So I'm at frame number one now. When I go to frame 45, for example, I see the 45 here. This is just, it does nothing currently other than just trying to load a number, a sequence of images, but I haven't typed in any sequence numbers here. So I need to choose an image name a sequence of images really. And for example in this folder I have a sequence of image, images. I rendered them. Uh, I call them Dolly Zoom for a reason I can tell you more about it in another tutorial. So I open the first one. It's the Dolly Zoom dot 0001.png. So it's a very common file name. Open. And I don't see it here because I need to press the key six. And now I see that person here. Frame 45. Now I go back and I don't see her update. It's frame 26 looks like the frame number one. And here you see it's loading the frame number one. Now let's click here and go back to this Lambert shader back all the way. And now we have an F here. All of a sudden, uh, this tag has entered the scene. But when we move forward to frame 47, it still looks like frame number one. That's a problem, obviously. Uh, and I posted that problem in the Maya area forum a while ago. My question was, please 
give me concise information about image sequences. And I discussed, uh, tried to discuss a few problems here, four points, and I got an immediate reply by Dornish, thank you very much. And Dornish said, basically any file type will do as long as it's compatible with your render engine. And PNG is certainly compatible, but it doesn't do that job with my project. Don't use a, a movie file with anything Maya or render related. Yeah, I agree. In the old days, it was QuickTime, which did work fine here. But nowadays, I think we do need image sequences. And when you have Premiere or Shotcut, which is my favorite tool, it's uh, open source, you can write image sequences from, Im uh, from movies, but uh, you need to check out what format is fine with you. Um, as for naming conventions, I'd recommend the following image number dot file type. Others will work, but again, this won't let you down. Number padding is fine, but Maya will work just fine without it. I doubt it. Not in my case. And um, I said, I thank you very much. And I try this and I tried it and it does not help me very much. Actually, when I scrub here, Maya crashes sometimes. And on the other hand, what I see now is that uh, the character in my scene does move a little bit. So Maya does read a couple of files, but when I go to 102, nothing happens. So this is really not much fun. So the old file type, the classic one for Maya is if. Now let me choose an if file sequence here. This is the image sequence from a movie which I used as an intro for a previous tutorial and it starts with frame number 1435 and it goes um, up to well something over 2000. So I choose the first one and open it and immediately I see that F here which means Maya is trying to read a file sequence but I don't see anything here. Why is that? And this is crucial. If you have a file number which is not 1 or 75 in this case, but an image sequence which, which starts with a higher number, you need to respect that in your timeline. So um, 1435, let's try this. 1435, 3000 here. Now I have a timeline which starts at 1435 and it ends at 3000. And when I scrub the animation now, I am totally fine. So with if files, I have no problem at all. And here it's going gray again. Why? Because my image sequence ends there. I don't have an image, 2,885. So before we quit, let me stress something. I get lots of comments in my channel and I really appreciate them, but I cannot give support. Support is costly. For a computer program such as Maya, you need experts who give you support and there are free support ways which I just showed you one of them for the render sequence you go to the Maya area at in the Autodesk uh, forum or you go to a Facebook group which deals with Maya and you might get an answer but for a professional answer you need to really pay not me but experts who are experts in that connection here. So what I can only provide is provide you with the things which are fun for me to make. A typical example here, I have followed this tutorial from a months back for an experiment and I had, it had worked perfectly. I loved this tutorial. Now when I go to do it, my selected emitter geometry doesn't gain emitter properties when I selected the liquid option in the Bifrost tab. My Bifrost green square area is also displaced, so what seems to be the center of the scene, though 
I'm not sure why I'm un unable to correct it. I have no idea, really. If I could answer this just with 10 seconds of thought, I would do it. But uh, this is really a sophisticated question with your system and you need to get professional support. If you want to pay for it, you certainly will get professional support. Emmanuel wrote, Hi, whenever I'm done adding weights and try to switch to another tool, my Maya crashes and says fatal error. How can I fix this? This was uh, a comment to a tutorial about painting skin weights. <laughs> I don't know your system and even if I knew your system, we would have to invest some time to fix this. And I cannot do this. Before we close and I show you a rendered scene which took the whole night to render actually, this is, by the way, quite fun when you have a machine which renders slow or an image size which is big, then leave the machine overnight rendering your image sequence. Well, thank you for watching and enjoy the day. Bye bye. Blah 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 bl